it going? Long time no see. Give me one second. Just got to close the garage door. Oh, it's pretty cold up here. I know I've been gone a long time, but uh, I'm back. Just uh, finished going out to uh, sh not shovel the snow, but snow blow the snow with our uh, riding lawnmower. I'm going to show you something really cool. It's been a long time. I'm sorry I've been gone. I've been having a lot of people ask where I've been and uh, I've just been busy and that's what this video is all about. As you can see, uh, it looks a little bit different in my shop. I've moved and uh, so I'm just going to tell you where I've been, what I've been up to and uh, I'm going to show you something really cool outside. So most people have always wanted to do this. Well, here it is. That is so cool. That was fun. I've always wanted to do that, and uh, I think it was pretty cool. So, as you can see, things are a bit different. Um, I do have to get out of these clothes and get ready to play in my shop. Um, I'm sorry to all the people that had been watching my videos, and I just everything all of a sudden stopped. I uh, luckily was. Uh, fortunate enough to have my girlfriend's grandfather pay for a trip to Langara and I'll uh, show you some pictures of that. Yeah, we gotta get this guy in. Good job, Let's sweetie. I, it's on, it's on. Just take in line. Keep your chip up. Keep your chip up. I don't, I think the sea line's got no, it. No, 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 oh. you're good, you're good. Just be ready to reel, hun. You gotta keep your hand on. Keep your chip up, chip up. Up, up, up. I can't have it up, hun. Look how much it's going. Let him go if he wants to go. Holy oh my God, it's just pulling him down. I think it is the sea line. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that, yo. Yeah, you gotta see my idea. This sucks. <laughs> you snapped it? <laughs> son of a bitch. That's two now. We just lost the sea lion. Let him go if he wants to go. Keep your chip up. I am. Okay. Real, 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 real. Good, good, good. Oh. What was that? Another radio. Easy. Oh my god. Oh. Okay. No, okay. Hold. Got a nice one on there. Yeah, let him. Good job, good job. She's coming though. Get ready to reel, hun, if we need to. You alright? Yeah, I think I got him. No, you don't know. Are you sure about yeah, that? Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. Just be ready to reel when he stops. Okay? Yeah. You think the sea lion has it? No. Oh, looking like it now. Yeah. Oh. Son of a bitch. Watch it. Watch your knuckles. Here you go. I'm pretty damn sure that's. Yeah. That's the lion. Damn. He's gonna run. Let him run. She said, let him run. Oh, oh, shit. Let him run. Gotta tire him out. Here he comes. Oh wow, he's big, huh? Ah! Let, let, let him go, let him go, let him go. Can you get 
Run. You're not letting him run, hon. Oh. Hey! Oh my god! Oh, 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 boat has a fish on right now and there's whales and behind me are sea lions. They say the the fins are okay. But yeah, the fins are like kind of like scallops. Yeah. Wow. What? Oh, it's giving you a good fight. Oh my god, man. It's a good one. He's got some power to him. Pull back on the tip, hun. Okay, I'll help you. Just know that I don't fully have it, so don't let go. Whoa! He's trying to make her <laughs> tired. Alright, for a bit. Here he comes, I see him. I thought it did. Yeah, here he comes. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Pull up. Okay, am I in your way here? Oh, he's hooked funny now. I'm gonna get past you. Looks like we're keeping him. Oh, it's a decent size, huh? Good one. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. Good job, it gave me a nice fight. Sorry, let go of this one. Thanks. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, he's here. He's here. I want him. I want him. I want him. I want him. 
Afterwards, Lisa had a uh, seminar to do in Florida in the middle of the summer, which don't recommend that to anybody going to Florida in the middle of the summer. So that was pretty much a month straight of what seemed like vacation, but at Langaria you're waking up at the crack of dawn, actually before, the, before, long before the sun comes up, you're out in a boat on the ocean rocking away, and, uh, and then to go to Florida and have to de deal with that type of humidity was just nuts. So we moved. After we got back, we got a uh, special assessment and it was going to be thousands of dollars and our condo corporation kept doing this so we decided we just didn't want to we didn't want to keep dealing with that so we found this nice little place out in the country uh, it's got 15 acres and uh, right in behind this wood pile is very large sort of like a two acre three acre open section I'll show you a picture of that Um, just wanted to show everyone what my new place is uh, gonna look like. This is this is the front of our driveway, so that's that's going in. So I'm gonna skip right up to that white tree. Uh, where are we? Like right up here. Right. So here I am at that white tree. 
and rewind if you wanted to see exactly where that white tree was again. So this is the front of Lisa and I's new home. So it's our driveway. We got two car right beside the house and I got a two car there. Got two parking spaces here for the vehicles and that's our front door. We have a Phoebe nest that actually just um, left the nest but uh, hopefully they'll be back next year. I don't know how well you can see with all the light but you can see it up there at the top of the post. So our front door. And this is the two-car garage. I'm just going to show you an exterior. I'll do another one of the interior. So we get an extra long driveway all the way to the barn. And uh, I'll uh, come back when I'm near to the wood. Great. So here's the garage. Well, not the garage, but the barn. You already saw the garage. That's what our backyard looks like. I'll show you over there in a minute. Hopefully it's only a minute. Maybe we should have had this out here first. And here is our barn. Already some of the stuff I've been collecting over the years. Awesome. We have a riding lawnmower. A few gas cans. Another uh, push mower. A lot of the stuff I've collected over the years and this is only the beginning. A whole pile of plastic I collected. They gave me a lot of wood. And uh, my samurai is going to go right here. 89 Suzuki Samurai. So yeah, this is the awesome barn that Lisa and I have. And uh, nice thick, I think that's, uh, I don't even know what that is. Maybe cedar. But yeah, can hang all those bikes from the wall up there. Anyways, so uh, now I'm going to show you on top of the hill. Alright, so here we are at the back of the house. And uh, Lisa's loft for her office. So, I'll show you the the tree line. So from that tree, and then let's see if we can get that. Right in there, you can see a line. So, unfortunately, a part of this backyard, which you can see the posts for it, um, it would mean I can't use that land, but maybe the neighbor will be nice and I can. Uh, Make a deal with them. Maybe you can come take apples from it, from the uh, from the trees that I eventually grow, or you know something. Make it a deal. And this is my shop. So um, already I've been uh, organizing. It's been taking me months, putting up shelves and tending to all the little repairs with the house. I uh, still have a few little little ones left to do. But um, I did want to let everybody know that I am getting back into projects again and I am doing things. Um, I've already started working on my HHO cell, which I could uh, give you a little sneak peek on. Um, that's my HHO cell I'm working on. I just took the reservoir tank out. So yeah, we moved and uh, got my seeds started for the year. I've uh, got a whole bunch more to plant. I've got a whole bunch of these cells. I'm going to have a huge massive garden in my backyard. Uh, organically grown of course. And uh, next summer we got to have wood. If you guys are thinking about going off the grid and heating with wood, it's not easy. I completely had no idea moving out here how much wood you actually go through. Besides the fact that it's been a really, really cold, uh, cold winter, some days uh, near minus 40, which is the same for Fahrenheit and Celsius. So um, it's pretty cold here. 
Uh, usually we have pretty mild uh, summers and, and we, we unfortunately don't have one this year. So and as you can see, my shop is still a mess, but majority of it's done. And uh, there's another thing that I've been working on. It's a dehumidifier. And uh, first of all, that's a water source, free water source. You don't even have to uh, do anything, just filter it. And um, unfortunately it stopped working and we sort of need it to pull the moisture out of that. So, um, yeah, just pretty much got to clean up the, the surface areas and I'll have all my shop back. This is all pretty much the stuff that I haven't found a spot for yet. So, that's, uh, I'd love to make a cell out of that. Look how big that is, you know, three feet tall. Maybe even more four feet tall. Imagine having a cell like that. It'd just be fun. So basically, just got to get back uh, to doing all my projects. We got the water to fuel uh, website, and uh, I got to get all that stuff going. That basically, I'm using um, some of my friends' cells that I think are of high quality design, and I'm building kits, custom kits made for high power. Everything is top top of the line, none of these cheap kits, hot wires, you know, no readouts. If you want a kit like that, I can build you a kit like that, no problem. So I'm designing a uh, flow, a digital flow meter for uh, HHO gas flow. Um, I'm, uh, I've written out uh, some plans to actually automate HHO, so all you have to do is add uh, high concentration electrolyte water and deionized water in another container and basically this thing will monitor and take care of uh, your HHO cell. So I, I pretty much came to the conclusion that the reason no one, uh, not everybody has HHO in their vehicle, which it doesn't make sense that they don't besides all the skepticism, but um, there is a lot of Regardless of how much people don't believe in it, it is still proven, even if you break even, even if you have a 5% loss, if you have a 5% gain, if you have a, whatever you want to do, if you want to minus 30 to 30 plus um, efficiency, your exhaust is still cleaner. It is still better for the environment and it should actually become a regulation that everybody has it and when you go and fill up with your gas you have another um, another uh, dispenser right beside it where you can fill up your deionized water and your electrolyte water and at the same time you can have uh, oil stations um, disposing of your old electrolyte water and servicing your you know servicing your servicing your cell you know uh, they can run a test on it see how efficient it's running check for any shorts so that way this basically if we can take HHO to a level of how the gasoline industry and the oil industry is treating our vehicles right now and we do that with HHO then there is no excuse why we shouldn't have it so that's uh, all a lot of work uh, coming in time I will this summer be getting back into the Revolution SSG bike um, it's just that that's not a high priority of mine and I'm sorry to the people that were following all the videos I had done a lot of work but when you you know got to go away for a month and then move right away and then unpack and all that stuff it's it's just I haven't been able to do any of my projects I've, I've had a, I have actually I'll show you basically with this concept of um, having a self-maintained system having it where it's easily accessible to the consumer. Um, I w I'm going to be offering right now to test people's cells. Um, I've already got a few cells. Um, I'll show you some of the stuff I have. So here are two cell designs that I'm working on right now that are my own. Basically that bottoms out and then something holds it on the outside and then this is insulated. I'll show you a picture right now.
So anyways, if you see that, that design, you will see that this thing can be as long as, it, as you want it. You want to have a cell that's 20 feet long, all you got to do is just stick a plug in this end, on either end, stick a plug in, weld it in, and then have this um, rod pressed in place prior to pushing everything in, and then you have something that can be locked, like, you know, like this. This, I got around the same time, I figured I would try to put something together easy. When you're dealing with machining, nothing is easy, so um, I, you know, with everything, too much time, I mean, not enough time, so I just said, for now, I just don't, I don't have the time. So, um, so it's, I think I've seen other people do designs like this before, um, very similar. So, this was all um, hose clamped together, really, really tight, and then all the, every edge was tacked together. So, so this is another thing I have to do. Uh, this is Ed Grimm's cell. He's uh, given me a used one, and I paid for a, um, and I paid for a new one. So. Uh, we're going to uh, test the efficiency of these, and that's something that I would like to do is uh, make it so people are testing watts per liter. Watts per liter is very simple. You don't have to do it by the second, and when you hear watts per liter, it's something easy to understand. So in doing so, I'm going to start all tests of any cell at one liter a minute, and then how many watts does it take? So that's the base, and uh, then we're going to also do the same thing where we're going to check 100 milliliters a minute, 500 milliliters a minute, a liter and a half a minute, and two liters. And by that, we'll be able to create a scale, and we could even do it by every 100 uh, milliliters, and we can actually find a curve where the cell is most efficient. So. By doing this, we can say, hey, at this, you're getting your highest efficiency for that cell. So that's something that will be involved on any of my uh, products that I sell on my website. So after I've done this, this may become on uh, maybe showing up at Water to Fuel. Um, I do have other uh, cells to test as well that are being sent to me. And uh, basically, that's how it works. If you got a good unit, I, I, I I contacted Ed because I like the design. It's, I don't know if we can see in here. So it's, it's very small surface area that allows uh, for current leakage. The rest of the plate is completely wrapped. So um, I really like that design. There's only two points where it leaks. One there and one there. So. And then we have the bigger one that he sent. All cells on our website will have full size description, will have surface area description. Everything will have to be listed on the website. So that's how it works. You are transparent with your data and your results and other people that have them can test them and prove it as well. Well, we'll help you sell units. We The biggest issue with the HHO market is that there's too many dishonest people. There's too many people that think that they know more than everybody else and putting everybody down for what they think is not good. Well, let's put that all aside now. Let's actually have it so it's in the open. You have a researcher that knows about HHO. Well, they're going to be able to go and learn what that cell specific cell does. Then if we have another um, another consumer, oh, they don't need to know all the technical information, they just look at the rating of the unit. So if you're honest, transparent, good customer service, everything, we're gonna sell your units and we're gonna offer our kits to go with them. So you don't have to deal with building kits anymore, It's we'll deal with it, 
We'll, we'll handle all of the, the, the advanced designs and I'm gonna actually show you what I'm talking about. All right, now keep in mind, it is being torn apart. I'll show you the electrolyte tank in a second. Um, the electrolyte tank got a little bit of a, I'm assuming it was something that came off of the, uh, the rubber. Um, I hadn't run it in six months. I turned it on and there was a little bit of a residue on the side of the tank. So this is what I'm talking about. It's just a little bit of a residue. You can see it come in from the, that side. You can also see it. You can also see it right there. So um, went to the dollar store. Got these for the fittings. I just go to the dollar store. I'm sure you can find them. They show them for cleaning out. So just looks like steam kettles, teapots, things like that. And they have a whole bunch of different sizes. Um, so yeah, these are used for cleaning up the fittings. I will be doing a video on if you have leaky fittings where they leak electrolyte out. Um, I have a, a solution from Ed Grimm. Hopefully it does work as he said it does and uh, we'll be finding that out. So what I did, I got a uh, toilet brush cleaner from the dollar store. Fairly uh, simple, cost me $1.25. Just gonna flip the screen around here. Just make sure you label it so no one uses it for uh, you know, cleaning a toilet. That way when you go to clean your cell, which you should probably do about every six months if you're using it uh, all the time, and just jam this in. See the mark there. If it doesn't come off, you might just want to soak it. Very careful with this. I have cleaned this out ahead of time, so rinse it out really well ahead of time. I'm going to just let this sit but uh, after it sits, it should be able to clean it fairly easily. Um, also, every six months, you should clean out your pipes. These are uh, my quick connectors, um, also available on my website. And uh, we'll be getting rid of the Teflon tape because the Teflon tape is not compatible with some electrolytes. The, the, um, there's silicone in the Teflon tape and silicone is eaten by uh, caustic materials. So. Um, we've got a special epoxy, so if we sell any of these electrolyte tanks, they will be sold uh, already pre-attached uh, pre um, in the direction that you want them. So uh, I'm just going to fill up the sink, let it sit overnight, and uh, it should allow me to clean this. So you can see it's much better. It's not uh, perfect, but uh, any type of maintenance on these um, on your uh, unit will... will uh, make them last longer um, so I just wanted to show you that um, just whenever you're dealing with any electrolytes be very careful um, they can uh, burn your skin I have burned my skin with it with it before so just be very careful so this cell is from um, I believe he called his company hot it's a uh, Harlan hydroxy cell um, I had done some tests on it but the PWM that he suggested uh, which comes from Ogo, isn't to my liking. Um, it has nothing to do with him, it's not his PWM, but uh, they are extremely expensive for, as PWMs go, and you don't, you don't have much, um, you're not able to get a fine-tuned frequency on it. So when you're using a PWM and you're trying to do tests on a cell, you're not going to get accurate results because this thing's jumping all over the place. It's amps are jumping up and down. It's ramping up and down. And I do have a watt a watt meter on here. It tells me the amps and volts. Uh, I've had it up to 30 amps. So, um, anyways, so uh, this is going to be a flow pump that I have um, just to clean out cells after and before I test them. So that way I don't have anybody else's electrolyte or whatever else they want to use. And, um, and that'll be controlled. Uh, this will actually become a dump pump. <laughs> dump pump. 
So this is going to have a thermostat in it. It's going to have um, a, a heater that, that's wrapped around it, a heating blanket, sort of like a heating blanket, but not. And um, basically, if it goes to, if it gets near uh, 32 Fahrenheit or zero, maybe a few degrees above it, it'll dump this into another, it'll dump the electrolyte into another container so that way nothing gets damaged in here. So um, the bubbler will get damaged, but those only cost a few bucks. Um, it's, you know, I think seven or eight bucks, I think I got them for. So, you know, um, this has a built-in power supply, which I will be taking out. And the fan's not working on it, so i got to take it out, and I'm going to just leave it out. I'll use this for storage for uh, some of these quick connectors. We'll uh, zoom that down a bit. So basically, everything that I'm building is quick and easy. I want the consumer to be able to do their own work very easily, or if they have a, a, a like if someone's a part of our network, um, you can come along. You can get paid for work. You'll uh, you'll always have access to work because there'll be always people needing service. And um, so basically, this is a um, they use them most commonly for forklifts. Um, so they are expensive, but I like to know that if I want, I can take my cell out of my vehicle, pop it off in one second, and uh, this also has a quick hose connect. So I can take my cell out in seconds. So I think that's how it should be. This does need a little bit more work. I had the panel off, that's why you can see that it's loose. So uh, it has a really high power relay. I think this one's 100 amps. That way, no matter what, it, this thing can run for 10 hours a day and it's not gonna destroy it. I went everything overboard because the only way to actually save with HHO is to be a courier um, or a truck company. It's the only way that you're gonna save. The, the cost of these materials will, it, it'll, if you're a commuter and you're driving no more than an hour a day during the week, you're going to take five to seven years to pay this off. You don't want one of these. But if you have extra money and you care about the environment, you do want one of these. This does reduce your emissions. Uh, you can find lots of reports on how it actually does reduce emissions. The uh, saving on fuel, uh, because it's such a minute amount, it's really hard to tell unless you do a long test. And then that's where you you know, you have a hard time proving yourself because the only way to see it is over a long test. But even at that, it, it, the, 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 the results vary so much. I have a scan gauge. The results vary on that too. So, you know, it's just uh, really, I don't even know if uh, dyno tests are, are long enough to test it. And the only thing that you're going to really get a result on from the dyno test is the, is the emissions. So... Um, I just wanted to show you, if you are making HHO at home, vent your HHO out. Do not let it come into the house. You know why? Because hydrogen floats and it'll sit at the top of your roof and all you need is one little static shock and boom. So I drilled a hole beside my uh, trim in my garage. Beside my so, and as you can see, that's also another quick connector. I don't want to be wasting time when I'm disconnecting and reconnecting things, so everything's super quick. Tomorrow, I'm going to be planting a whole bunch of seeds and uh, get more of my garden going. Um, I'm gonna have a lot of plants. If you live locally and want a few uh, organic plants. If it's uh, if the demand's not too overwhelming, I'm more than willing to share. It takes nothing to do it, so why not? So for the next little while, it's going to be HHO cells. So um, next time you see me, I will not have this.